Uh, you think I ought to have one? Probably not necessary. Yeah. <clears throat> not enough hair that they would get caught in it. <laughs> I think you said not enough hair. Yeah. Oh. So this is John Hupp, the beekeeper. Hi, we're lighting the smoker. And we want to dispel one myth immediately, and that's that the smoker calms the bees. And the second myth with the smoker is that you can smoke bees out of a hive. If we could have smoked them out of that wall over there, we'd have smoked them out. So that won't work, so we did what's called a trap out. And you'll see a screen over the entrance hole that they've been using next to the plumbing, where they went inside the slumpstone wall and set up camp. Actually, we should call it home. And once they're in, the smoke is unlikely to drive them out. The smoke does have a particular quality of starting a hardwired response in the bee. They want to suck up their valuables and pack their suitcase in the same way you would if you were notified of a fire. So they're taking the liquid honey, they're putting it in their honey tank, which is their suitcase. Okay. And they're busy doing that instead of being concerned with what we're doing. So we're just going to puff this lightly at the entrance here. I probably didn't give it enough chance to really get started. Yeah, it's going. Let me show that screen that you built for the, from the wall. Yeah, the... this is a trap screen and it's a cone. So the bees crawl, they crawl up and they crawl out, but they don't find their way back in. Very good. I call it a check valve for bees. Very good. So we're going to smoke these guys. We don't want to blow fire and brimstone in there, of course. You can see the smoke also bothers the ants. Look at them get all excited down there. So we've got the uh, hive on a greased can so that the ants can't get in it. This just lets the bees know that something's going on, distracts them by uh, sending them to pick up their, their goods. I'm going to put on some safety glasses just so that uh, I don't get an accidental sting in the eye. And I'm doing this in a t-shirt gotten used to these bees. I'm pretty calm around bees anyway. I can work all my hives in a t-shirt. But I don't recommend that you do this the first time you start working on things. So we always check the top of the queen because one, two percent of the time she's crawling around on there. And we don't want to put that down where the ants are so we're going to park it up here. Normally I put it at the entrance where the ants, I mean the bees can crawl back in the hive. But if I set it there, it's going to have that many ants on it in short order. So here's a typical beehive from the inside. We've got one, two, three, four frames that are occupied with bees and comb. And we've got an outside frame here that is not. This is a frame without foundation. You see there's nothing in here. The bees will build a comb in it that will show in the inside ones. And there is also one in there that did have foundation. This is a deep frame and this is a deep box. And you can see that it fits all the way down except for three-eighths of an inch on the bottom, which Langstroth called a bee space. So we're going to park this up here, where it doesn't fall down on things and cause problems. A little more smoke across the top. This one I'm using splines, so that they have a center rib to start their comb. You can see they started a piece of drone comb here. And that's comb that they built. Yes. Yeah. So they're building that. They chain together and they make the space warm. They secrete wax flakes out of their abdomen and they stick them together and make comb. Wow. And I could leave these bees on, but I'd rather they were in the box than out here because they might not be flyers yet. Uh, we have a choice. We're always stacking things up where they fall down or putting them back where we got them. called a hive tool which you can pry these apart with but for the sake of uh, your limited time I'm working with that one now this is a gorgeous comb this was a sheet of plain plastic foundation when we started so in the time that we've been doing this trap out since uh, July 21st is that right I think so sounds about right they have built all this wax and they have filled it with nectar and now they're starting to cap the honey this is a medium frame that was in that box. So they're capping the honey to feed during the winter? Yes, this is their pantry. Okay. You can see that the connectors.
Roger reflecting back at you if I get the light in the right place here. I don't know what it's like for you. There's down sun there. Beautiful. So you've got a nice location with lots to feed on here. And they're making that comb big because they're taking advantage of the comb that they built and filling it up with extra length there. Now, when we did the trap out, it's not likely that the queen is going to come out of the inside hive. Mm -hmm. And we gave them some queen cells and one queen hashed and chewed out the other queen cell. See, this is all, they made all of this. Everything is just their own work there hanging from the splines. Wow. So I was saying that uh, the one queen hatched and chewed to the other queen cell, but I don't think she ever made it back from her mating flights because I see no evidence of a queen here. I, I never, I mean, you saw the queen earlier, I, you know, a few weeks ago. I never identified the queen compared to the other bees. What's... Uh, she's longer, but longer? this would be a virgin queen that we saw, so she's not a whole lot longer, but she has a black shiny hump right here on the top of the thorax. Okay. So these are brown and fuzzy. Yeah. And the queen will be black and shiny there. She's a little bit different shape, and then as she gets mated and starts laying, she gets an elongated abdomen and get that egg died into the bottom of the cell. So normally we'd see brood down in this area, but it's all nectar. There is pollen here. You can see the dark colors. There's brown, there's gray, there's tan, there's black. The pollen comes in all colors. So no queen visible there. Okay. also in a normal hive with a brood box and a laying queen I wouldn't have an empty frame here in between the other two but I want them to build nice straight combs so I put the empty in while we are waiting on verifying that there's so no that's queen. what they're doing they're building them yeah you can see them chained together there see how yeah. liquid that is yeah that's how they hang together they measure the space and then build the wax wow you're getting a short course here how are we doing on your 10 minutes we're great don't worry about that careful about getting these frames back together, they don't smash anybody. Yep. If you don't smash bees, you don't have the alert pheromone, and then they're not uh, trying to drill us. And my favorite concept is to become one of the bees working on the hive. Now, this one was part of that theory of making lots of use out of their comb, so they drew the comb that they want to store the nectar in out about twice the normal depth. See that sticking yep. way out here? Yep. And they could do that because there wasn't comb next door. Okay. Now this is a shallow, it's even smaller than the medium. And this okay. is the only comb that they started with when we started the trap out on the 21st. So it's been okay. just about four weeks. The uh, original queen cells were down here in this corner. Yep. Down here, let's see if we can get them to move aside and see if there's, I think I cut them off, didn't I? Were you there that I day? I wasn't, I had to go. I think but, I took them to yeah. class and we showed them to people. Now there is yeah. some leftover of the original one there. Some people might think that's odd to get the bees to move by kind of tickling them a little bit, but that's how it is when you're one of the bees working on the hive. So this is where I would expect to see some brood too, but I'm not, I'm seeing only nectar down in there. And we can use the smoke to gently irritate them get them to move out of the way. Notice I'm not pumping these billows at all, really. I'm yeah. just sort of fluttering on it a little bit just to get them to move. And then we see pollen in there and nectar, get the sunshine down in there, and there isn't any brood there. Yeah. So queen didn't make it from her mating flights, and we need to do some active queen replacement here. So that, will these bees survive without a queen? No, or? they'll only live uh, four, six, eight weeks and then uh, they'll be done. So we need right. to get them queen soon so that they're strong enough and alive enough to get the queen in there. When they're done, do they leave the hive to pass on? Generally, they like a clean environment. So if they're failing and they know it, they will leave and die outside. Wow. And then pretty soon there aren't enough, a critical amount of them to keep the hive warm and the ones left inside will then get cold and succumb. Wow. Okay. So it's imperative getting a queen in there to lay new eggs. Yeah. I was thinking we were about done with the trap out. We had a schedule on it, but that's, there was a new swarm into the wall, so they didn't have the resources to last a long time that a more established hive would. So do you think 
in the wall there might be a brood to hatch yet, or do you think that uh, no, flurry last the, week? The queen probably would have stopped laying soon after the uh, incoming nectar and pollen stopped. Okay. And so three weeks from egg to bee, so they're hatching now, and then another couple, three weeks for them to start flying. So another another couple weeks will be done with yeah. uh, the inside bees, pretty much. Okay. Fantastic. And that's a visit to the hive and a check on what they're doing. I'm get this closed back up without crushing anybody. We got that one other frame. I want to move these over yeah. and then put the oh, one okay. up top in on it. This is where a little bit of leverage from a hive tool can come in here. This box is a little tighter than some, so yeah. we can uh, end the video with that if you want, or you can stand by while I get a pry tool. Okay. We'll do a little pause here while John gets the pry tool to set the frames properly in the box. For the van, we've got an end wrench. Okay. See how a little bit of leverage goes a long way toward making those frames move. Mm. more easily. Notice they move the whole group at once rather yeah. than this one, then this one, because that stops the opportunity for the bees to crawl back into those spaces yep. and causes uh, condition to smash bees. So how do they go from one frame to another? Oh, down through the top or up through the bottom? Yes, and they can also reach over when there's comb mm -hmm. on the next one and crawl across. Yeah. And then sometimes they build what we call bridge comb, where they have a little bridge in there from one side to the other, and they use that. A lot of beekeepers will take that bridge out. I'll take it out if it's a concern of smashing bees when we put things back together. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, if they built it, they must want it, and I'll leave pretty much what they build until it's too much in the way, because it's a lot of effort for them to rebuild stuff. Yeah. Like this propolis, all of that came in on bee legs. And it's okay. really fascinating to me when I do a cutout and take 300 pounds of hive out of a wall, all 300 pounds came in on bee legs or in their bellies. Oh wow, yeah. So this is just a gentle flick. It's not a rub and it's not a scrape. It's just to get them into the box. And here we do the bulldozer technique where we avoid scissoring, crushing, or plopping the lid down on top of the bees. Yeah. And here we smoke them, get them to go down in, and clear out of the way so that we don't crash anybody. I'm using my finger here on the side to lift the weight off the box, and then I'll do this little wiggle, and we did it. So the ones outside will find their way back around to the entrance. Sweet. And we had a rock. There it is. Keep the wind from knocking this over. And then we have to show your special... Yes. Hardware. They've got a big parking lot out to the side over here where people going by can see the hive. So this is a visual block. And I had the cardboard and Billy had the political sign that fits down through the corrugations in the cardboard. Yeah. And there we have it. And then you got to show off your sign down there too. I really like that. I think you can see it. Beekeeper will be setting up a cone hive, which this is the cone here for trapping them out with a check valve, and that's what we talked about, meaning the bees will leave the hive in the wall, and then when returning, we'll enter a new exterior hive. And that's what they're doing. Everything is going just according to plan. And Billy has been amazing for a newbie in being uh, comfortable around them and checking on them and making sure nobody's getting caught and blocking up the exit and also noticing whether ants were on the hive. Very good. You've done a great job. Yes, thank you for your program. And I'll take these off so you can see me. And you guys have a great day. Thank you, Jonathan.